Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Yes, everything is different in case you missed it. Yesterday's video, we talked about how we have to get rid of everything. And between when we filmed that on Monday, today's being Friday, the hot news catch is gone. So we are at the Reese's dining table that we moved over here so that we could film hot news. Obviously, Echo is gonna be a little worse in this episode because all the sound panels and the furniture is gone from our filming room. So bear with us as we get ready for the move to the United States. And we appreciate everybody who's sticking with us through that, which brings me to today's video sponsor. In case you wanna help support us on this journey, we actually have some fresh merch that you can pick up. This one's a little big for me, which is why I'm not wearing it, but we got the Press F for Respect shirt, as well as a new shirt design that Jason just dropped, which is the Tech Gator. So if you wanna pick anything up at our merch store, you can do so at the link in the video description. It helps support us on this move and make sure that the transition to the States isn't such a scary one. And with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about today's tech news, or rather the tech news from the week that I basically missed. So let's go ahead and jump into the first little bit, which is Intel actually delivering on the promises that they made regarding the 10th generation high-end desktop chips known as Cascade Lake X, because back at IFA, Intel was saying that we're gonna see potentially up to two times the price to performance value that we should get out of Cascade Lake versus what we got from the 9900 series. And according to all of the information that Intel has now published regarding the 1090 series or the 10D9 series, depending on who you're asking, and it looks like the pricing is super compelling. This is one of the great things about competition. It can drive down prices. One of the issues though, is that this 10D900 series is still going to be based on 14 nanometer technology. And at least according to Intel, Intel's own information, the IPC improvement should basically be non-existent. And what we're getting is potentially some slightly better boost clocks as well as pricing that is highly compelling. So if we take a look at the 10D900 XE, you're coming in at a price of $600 for a 10 core 20 thread CPU which is way different than what it was last year. Then the 10D920 XE, 12 cores, 24 threads, $690. You compare that to AMD's offerings, the 3900X, and that's about a $200 price difference instead of over a $1,000 price difference. Maybe not that bad, but hundreds of dollars separated them previously. The 10D940 XE, 14 cores coming in at $785. And then the 18 core 10D980 XE, which used to cost right around the $2,000 mark is now at $980, considering that the 18 core is something that AMD is not going to be offering on their AIM4 platform right now. That is a heck of a steal compared to what Intel did last year. And this is probably one of the first times in a while that Intel has decided that they are going to be dropping pricing, even though there's not a whole lot else, like there's no innovation happening here. It's just that the new generation is going to cost less. Obviously there are pros and cons to picking up the Cascade Lake X chips versus what AMD is currently offering on their Ryzen 3000 series. Chief amongst those would be quad channel RAM, more PCI Express slots, better AVX 512 instruction, as well as a few other things that Intel chips tend to do better. However, AMD still has key advantages in the realms of PCI Express 4.0, cheaper motherboards, and the fact that it's a much smaller chip and probably will not run as hot. And the price value of AMD is still really good even with the new Intel processors. And alongside all of that information about the new 10D uh, series, we're also gonna be getting them on October 7th. That is the current launch date of these processors with availability expected to be in November. Speaking of something else new coming to Intel stuff, that is USB 4 was just found in Linux kernel drivers that were just released. So the USB 4 is gonna be up to 40 gigabits per second, can support things like PCI Express, DisplayPort, a whole host of things in the USB type C form factor. It's basically gonna conglomerate all of the different standards to make it less confusing, except for the fact that they're now calling it USB 4 with no space between the letters and the number instead of being USB space 4, it's USB 4, all one word.
And then one other new thing is Intel's Gen 11 graphics. The Iris Plus Graphics G7 was just benchmarked against AMD's integrated graphics known as Vega 10. And what was found is that on the whole, it does look like the new Iris graphics, which are not part of Project Z, which is gonna be Gen 12 graphics, which is coming out next year. The Gen 11 stuff actually beats AMD's roughly comparable integrated GPU, not by a heckin' lot, probably about five to 10%, depending on the game and implementation, but Intel still doing pretty okay in the GPU department, even before their dedicated GPU launch. And then let's shift over to some AMD news, which is apparently at an MSI trade show presentation, one of MSI's employees unveiled that there is potentially going to be hundreds of new improvements coming to AMD's next microcode up Date. It's not really detailed what's going to be happening in that, but over a hundred new features are expected, not just bug fixes, but actual new implementations in the next gen microcode. We'll have to wait and see if that's actually true um, because it's an MSI employee who decided to divulge that information. So we'll have to see if AMD is actually bringing that out. And then one CPU that uh, hasn't exactly been super confirmed or hasn't actually been launched, that's the Ryzen 9 30. 900, a 65 watt TDP chip, 12 cores, 24 threads. Well, the extreme overclocker Splave uh, posted an article over on Tom's Hardware showing that he was able to set several world records using this 65 watt TDP 12 core chip, hitting 5.5 gigahertz on all 12 cores when under liquid nitrogen cooling. So, dang, that's impressive. And then the RX 5500, which is supposed to be more of the entry level or mainstream consumer GPU of Navi that AMD is going to be bringing out, should be coming out on October 7th. Yes, indeed, the same date that the new Tendi series is launching from Intel, October 7th being the date that the RX 5500 coming out. It's expected that it's gonna provide around RX 580 level performance for just under $200, which is good in the new market. It's gonna be compelling price-wise, but it's not really good when you compare it to the used market, where you can probably get down to about $100 for an RX 580. So it's a weird uh, balance of Navi coming through, probably gonna have better uh, performance efficiency where the seven nanometer technology is gonna make it so that it doesn't consume as much power, but it's not really a blazing a new trail in the current market. But Windows is gonna be blazing a new trail with their update. The Windows 10 second half of 2019 update is apparently going to have favored core awareness as well as increased single threaded performance. Favored cores obviously uh, would allow CPUs such as Intel and AMDs to find the core that performs best and then boost that more effectively and implement that slightly better, which could bring out better performance. AMD kind of already indicates that in the Ryzen Master software. You'll see a little star next to the favored core that is probably the one that's gonna perform the best. And hopefully with this new Windows update, it should mean that it will perform better, but at the cost of something else breaking because it's a Windows update. You can't have those work just flawlessly. Speaking of things being compromised, TSMC got sued by Global Foundries for infringing on its patents. TSMC counter sued with an infringement of 25 patents. It's going down between the two giant uh, chip makers. TSMC obviously known for producing AMD, NVIDIA, and Apple's uh, things that they released. Global Foundries was really well known for producing AMDs right before they launched Ryzen 3000 because Global Foundries apparently couldn't keep up with the seven nanometer process. So AMD switched over to TSMC. It's a whole, a patent infringement lawsuit fight going down. We'll see where it leads. It could potentially lead to bad news for consumers. It could mean that certain things don't get sold if the patent infringements are found to be legitimate. We'll see where it goes. And then Razer, in case you're a streamer, has just announced the world's first I don't know why this matters, but it's the Razer Siren Emote microphone, which has an 8 bit LED display on the back of the microphone so that you can show things off to your stream. I like it and think it's dumb at the same time. Uh, we have a Razer Siren X here at the office and I actually like the sound quality that comes out of that thing, but 
I don't know I need an 8-bit display. But you know what you're gonna need on your new Pixel 4 when that gets announced on October 15th? Well, that's gonna be the new Pixel Neural Core, which is going to do a lot of the AI enhancements that happen in Google's photos. This was previously known as Pixel Visual Core, and now it's renamed to Neural Core, probably just to get more on the AI hype, but there's been tons more leaked about the Pixel 4, including the fact that there's a new Google Assistant UI that's coming out, as well as the fact that there's gonna be face unlock for payments in the Google Play Store, which is a highly convenient uh, method of paying for things. I, I absolutely love it on Apple's devices if Google can actually implement it anywhere near the efficacy of what's on the iPhone I think a Pixel 4 might be in my future. What is in Apple's future is apparently in-ear noise-canceling AirPods, which were just found in the iOS 13.2 beta. Uh, this isn't the first time that there's been rumors of active noise-canceling on AirPods, but it's in the, the software now, so hopefully it happens. I would like that. I would like, I'm highly considering picking up the Sony in-ear ones that have active noise canceling. I already have the over-ears and I can sell those and just get the in-ears because I would prefer it anyways. We'll see. I love active noise cancellation. It makes everything better and the smaller, the better for me. And that's what TikTok says about paid political advertisements. In fact, not just smaller, but no election related ads, advocacy ads, or issue ads are gonna be taking place on the platform, probably partially because the target demographic of TikTok is not really at voting age just yet, but also just to kind of limit on being accused of meddling in elections and whatnot. But all I know is how am I going to put videos on TikTok if I can't talk about my partner Sanders Yang 2020? Hmm? Or, or Trump Biden 2020, huh? You didn't see that one coming. But uh, you know, political advertisements, UFD tech, let's get ready for that. Reese, get me some political ads. Actually, we do have something political to talk about that's relevant to stuff going on in South Africa. That'll be a future video. Anyways, that's not here nor there, which is also what's gonna be happening with Disney Plus not being on Amazon Fire Services. Apparently, Disney and Amazon not being able to agree on how much ad buys Amazon can have on Disney-related apps, which is weird. Um, apparently, Amazon wants 40%, Disney offered 10 they can't come to a compromise. Amazon's well known for just not having features of other people's products just because they can't come to an agreement. A key feature would have been Chromecast on Amazon Prime Video. That took forever. Uh, so it's not like this holdout couldn't last for a long time. But you know it's not gonna last for a long time, your drone, because Palmer Lucky, the dude behind Oculus, his new company is making drone ramming drones. Yes, my friends, they're using AI and a whole bunch of stuff to lock onto a drone. You hit go, you smash it out of the sky. It could be used for privacy reasons. If it's on your property, it could just be used for sports. I would love a drone ramming drone, I tell you that much. I would ram it into Reese all the time. Reese, Hello. I'm gonna drone ram you. Why? You deserve it. It's fair. That is fair. Ah, you know it's not fair? Self-driving cars, mainly because I don't have one. But with the new V10 update that came out to Tesla, they rolled out their new smart summon feature, which allows the Tesla car to drive out of a parking spot and come meet you wherever you are. And Elon Musk reported that over 550,000 smart summon uses happened in the first few days, half a million, that's crazy. However, if you've seen videos of it, it's not exactly ready for prime time. I absolutely would not advocate using it in any sort of busy parking lot at the moment. Use it only if the parking lot's not busy or if you absolutely have to. It's a little, it's a little iffy. The car just seems almost too cautious about its environment. And if it would just, you know, not care about other cars and go, it'd probably be having less issues. I don't know. Watch some smart summon videos and let me know what you think after you finish this video, which is done anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode of Hot News. Don't forget to buy our merch, which I chucked at that chair, which you can check out at the link in the video description. You've got this gorgeous design of press F for specs. You have the new tech gator setup, uh, as well as a few other designs that will help support us in this transition. Thank you for watching this episode of Hot News. Thank you for uh, dealing with our dust and uh, bye.
cat. <laughs> Please, thank you. Also, the new tech gator. <laughs> Were you watching the camera and you didn't see me throwing? <laughs> 